I'd like to speak to you today about four single words that changed people's lives. Four single words that changed people's lives. And the first word isn't really a word. Well, it is a word, but it's a proper noun, and it's a name. The word Mary, when that word was spoken, it changed that person's life forever. Now, if I look at you and say, Mary, that's not going to make much difference to you. But if I look at this congregation and I just say the word Thorla, one person in this room in particular will start to listen. Because I've suddenly addressed her with her name. And if I say Joel, I know there are many Joels. I've actually met quite a few Joels. There are people I've met this week in conference. I've never heard their names before, but I've heard the name Joel. But because Joel is here with me, if I say his name, suddenly his attention is taken and he realizes, and also I think Thorla realizes, that somebody who knows them is addressing them. And this happened when the person addressed Mary. Immediately, she realized who was talking to her. If you read the context of the scripture in the book of John, in chapter 20 and verse 16, you realize that Mary had gone to the tomb to dress the body of Jesus. And her greatest concern was how she was going to access the Lord Jesus. Because in her mind, even though Jesus had said many, many times that he would be crucified, but he would rise again on the third day, still it hadn't sunk into her heart or the hearts of those about her. So when she came, she was amazed to find that the tombstone had been rolled away. So that was further confusion for her life. Not only was her Lord and her friend crucified and put away, but now the tomb was empty and she didn't know where her Lord was. So somebody stood by and she just assumed uh, that it was the gardener. And she asked the gardener, where have you put the body of my Lord? But then he said one word. He addressed her, Mary. And suddenly he, she realized that Jesus was alive. I, I can remember when the Lord started speaking to me and you suddenly realize that he isn't dead or a religious figure of the past. He is alive and what is more, he is interested in you and actually you can know him. The resurrection of Jesus and the resurrected Jesus speaking into our lives changes our lives because we realize somebody cares about us, somebody knows about us, and he who cares about us and knows about us is alive forevermore. And thank God that he is the one who speaks into our lives. The next word is an Aramaic word. If you learn this word, you can tell people that you can speak Aramaic. Aramaic was the common language that the people, uh, many, many people in the land of Israel spoke at the time. It was actually a mixture of a number of languages. Uh, the, the religious people would like to speak Jewish because it was a very official uh, uh, religious language. And of course, a lot of people in the day spoke Greek 
um, and uh, because Greek had been the language of learning. So many people spoke Greek, even though it was the Roman Empire at the time. And of course, there were the Romans that spoke Roman, but a lot of the people of the country spoke Aramaic. That was their colloquial language. And so Jesus spoke this Aramaic word to somebody who was deaf and also could not speak. Ephatha. Ephatha. It's quite a mouthful because it puts a number of sounds together that we wouldn't expect. Ephatha. And that simply means be opened. When Jesus said it, it wasn't a request, it was a command. It was a command spoken into the life of this person. In fact, if we turn uh, to Mark chapter 7 uh, and uh, verse 34, Mark chapter 7, uh, sorry, I need to just uh, find this here, Mark 7 and verse 34, we find uh, that it tells us uh, in verse 31, having departed from Tyre and Sidon, he came through to Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee, and they brought one to him who had was deaf and had an impediment of speech and begged him to put his hand on him. It's really interesting, isn't it, that Jesus spoke to the deaf. Jesus spoke to the deaf. The Bible tells us that before we come to the Lord Jesus, we hear, but we don't hear. We see, but we can't see. In fact, our hearts cannot receive because uh, our lives are deadened by the power of sin. In fact, it likens us up to, like, to people who have legs and who can't walk. But here, this person actually couldn't speak, actually couldn't hear. And so their friend brought them and said, Jesus, please do something for our friend here. And so it tells us, and he took him aside from the multitude, put his fingers in his ears and spat and touched his tongue. And then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man heard and started speaking. I don't know what it was like for you, but before I was a Christian, um, at the teenage years that I was at, swearing was just common currency. And it seems to me, that's normal nowadays, even publicly. You know, as young lads, we would swear at one another and so on and so forth. But swearing was common currency. But I remember when God spoke into my life and changed my life, almost looking back at me, looking at myself and saying, how come you're speaking like this now? No longer did I want to speak the words that I used to speak. No longer did I want to express the things that I was expressing in the way. Yeah. But this man had never been able to talk before freely and openly. And not only that, when Jesus spoke into his life, he could hear again. And so Jesus said, well, uh, just go and, uh, you know, Tell nobody, just carry on with your life. But that's very difficult, isn't it? To just carry on with your life as usual. In fact, I often wonder why Jesus did that. But that one word changed that man's life forever. The power of God spoken into our life, the power of a word spoken into our life can change our lives forever. Now, the first person we talked about, Mary, God spoke to her on her own. 
But I want you to notice in the second instance with this man that unless somebody had brought him to Jesus, he wouldn't have been in the place to be delivered and be set free. I want to emphasize, emphasize this today because I want you to go away from this place to let you know that you can be instrumental in people receiving a miracle in their lives just by getting people to Jesus. You all know one of my favorite stories is about the four men who decide to take the roof off and then let their friend down. But that man who got forgiven of his sins and miraculously healed of his lameness would never have got there if it wasn't for his good mates, four good friends. Sometimes uh, there are groups of uh, a small Christian group and they start praying for somebody because they know that that person needs the hand of the Lord to change them. Uh, maybe you'll start praying. I remember Sister Carmen, you were doing that triplet, I think, where you were praying for three people. But I want you to know that the supernatural power of God would never have happened unless his friends had brought him to Jesus. Now, let me tell you, we can't physically bring people to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can physically bring people to church and invite people to church. But I want you to know that you can lead people to the Lord Jesus in your prayers and in your commitment and in your talking to and encouraging your friends who you see a need. And let's realize that the miraculous supernatural power of God can be manifested by one word. Just one word is what it took to bring deliverance for this man. The next word I would like to tell you about that changed this person's life forever is the word come. Now this was spoken to somebody who had already been touched by the power of the Lord, was already saved, was already following the Lord Jesus, but Jesus said the word, come. One single word, and I think forever this man's life was impacted, even though people looked around at what followed as a failure. Does anybody know, have an idea what I might be talking about? Anybody got an idea? Yes. What, what do you think, Sister Carly? Speak up into this mic. I think you're talking about Peter. I tell you what, this lady's a great Bible student, isn't she? <laughs> she knows from one word. It's Peter. You remember this story? They had seen Jesus feed the 5,000. And then Jesus sends them across the sea, and he remains behind. And he says, okay, get over to the other side. And they're actually rowing this time. So they're rowing, and they're rowing, and it's really, really hard work. And then not only is it really, really hard work, but then the winds and the waves start to blow, and are contrary to them, and they start to be really concerned because it's hard work and they know that they're in danger because of the size of their boat. And then in the middle of it all, they see what they think is it. Well, they think, first of all, that it's a ghost. They think that Jesus is a ghost. I mean, that's the only explanation because you can't walk on water, can you? So that's the only logical explanation, that it must be a ghost. But then somebody says, no, 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 it's Jesus. So Peter wants to know about this supernatural power. 
I love Peter because he wants to move on from where he is. I pray that every one of us, whether we've been at conference or not, uh, wherever we've been this week, uh, that we all want to move on in our relationship with God. Uh, we all want to get out of the boat because Peter said, Lord, if it's you. <laughs> now, this is, quite, this is quite a statement if you think about it, okay? You're in the middle of a storm. The mates that you're in the boat with reckon it's a ghost. So Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. And he hears one word. He doesn't hear a theological discussion about the oneness of God and the efficacy of the blood of Jesus and the power of the name of Jesus and the second coming of Christ. All he hears is one word. But because he knows who's talking to him, it makes all the difference. And Jesus says, come. So stand up, Norman. I can see him over there. I've got nice blue carpet here between me and Norman. Norman, if it's you, say come. Okay. So this is easier. Yeah? <laughs> nice easy carpet. I don't have to stress and strain, pray and fast. I just walk. But it wasn't like that. It was C. Up and down, in and out, round and about. And yet Peter says, Lord, if it's you, say, bid me to come. And Jesus says, come. Now, somewhere along the line, I've told you this before, somewhere along the line, you've got to do this. Let's say this is the edge of the boat, okay? And you've been given an instruction, come. Now, you can... But at some point, folks, you've got to commit so that it's either going to support you or else you're going down. So Peter goes. Can you imagine what it must have felt like? I can't. I would, I would love to find out. He's supported by the supernatural power of God. But then he starts looking around. Whoa, that's a wave. Whoa, the wind. And he's forgotten that Jesus is over there and he starts to sink. And we all say, ah, poor old Peter. But I tell you what, it was not a failure. He experienced something that he would never, ever forget about in his life. And guess what? He was the only one of the 12 who would get out the boat. <laughs> you can see why Jesus chose him. One word, I think, changed Peter forever. Jesus rebuked him, oh, ye of little faith. But actually, Jesus was just saying, come on, Peter, you can have more faith than that. He wasn't squashing him down or push, but the challenge, he'd been challenged, but he'd stepped out. I would like to encourage you, if you are already serving the Lord Jesus and God speaks to you saying, come, step out. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you step out in circumstances that don't look right, you will experience the supernatural power of God. And it's, it doesn't come by theory. And, of course, you would have had, in the boat, you would have had health and safety officer. Hold on a minute, Pete. Before you get out of the boat, have you done a risk assessment? <laughs> have you checked how safe this is? Or, of course, there's then the insurance policy. Pete, before you step out, 
Have you got insurance that covers you for walking on water? No. But step out and hear the voice of the Lord Jesus and move forward and he will touch your life. Now, you don't have to wait until you're at Western Superman, you've hired a rowing boat and things get difficult to step out following the Lord Jesus Christ. You can make steps day by day where God speaks to you. Maybe God tells you to go and speak to somebody else. And that gets me to my last and final word. You might have guessed it already. It's a very simple word. Go. G-O. Go. Because when God has spoken into your life and when he's opened up your ears to hear and your tongue to being loose to praise him and when you've experienced God's supernatural power in your life, it's time to go. Jesus said, go into all the world. But the essence of all that he said in the Great Commission can be summed up in this, go. And this is where we find the focus of what we're doing in our lives. Yes, primarily we have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. When we repent and put our faith in him, we are establishing that relationship that we believe in him and that we put our trust in him. And that starts a relationship. In, uh, in uh, village life, before we got into the big Asdas and so on and so forth, people would have a relationship with their customers. They would, in fact, I, we were staying above the bakery in, uh, in Clandidno. And I, uh, once I was sat there with, with my friend Bart and we were sitting down and then the owner sat down. And I noticed that he was saying hi and uh, to people around about. He'd established relationships with people. When we repent of our sins and are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. We believe it's for the remission of sins, but we are doing it in obedience to the one who can forgive us of our sins. And oh my, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we are filled with his power, him. He has come to live inside of us. A relationship has started. And that is primarily what being a Christian is about. But that's not all that it's about. Because there are people out there who do not know about the Lord Jesus. There are people who are deaf and can't speak who we can bring to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you to go because you can make the difference. Sometimes we look at people and we assess them. Well, we're not sure. Maybe I'm not quite sure about this. Let me give you a little testimony about a man called Warren. Warren, this last week, was going to Llandidno to spend a week walking around Llandidno up the Great Orm and around about and to enjoy himself. On the train that he took to get from Manchester to Llandidno, he happened to be sat by three Filipino ladies. And I'll let you guess where they were going. On a train, three Filipino ladies heading to Llandidno, they were going to conference. So they spoke to Warren and invited him along to the conference services. So he came along on Tuesday night, and they said to him, Warren, you need to come along to the men's service on the Wednesday, and you need to get there and let God touch you. Now, this is literally what I did when I met Warren in the men's service. He's sitting 
halfway back, halfway, so three quarters back. I said, hi, my name's Mark, what's, what's your name? So he said, Warren. I said, I, I'm really pleased to meet you, Warren. Um, yeah, I'm, and that was, that was about it. I didn't give him a home Bible study. I didn't preach to him. I just shook his hand and great to see you. Went and sat down in my seat. And then we had a great, great service, great preaching, great worship. And then there was an altar call. And uh, Dr. Bernard called people forward and so on and so forth. So the altar call is going on here. And I'm sitting here minding my own business, you know, you know, praising God for what's taking place, but just minding my own business. And I get a tap on the shoulder, and I'll give you one guess who it was. Gene, who do you think it was? This young man has been listening to my sermon. <laughs> it was Warren. He said, Mark, I would like you to pray for me to receive the baptism of the Spirit. Amen. Now... <laughs> now, that's not a small thing, folks, okay? You know, it's not like saying, hey, can you lend me 50p, you know, that kind of thing. Can you pray for me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Because the preacher has been preaching, and I thought I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I think I need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We talked about a few things he repented of a few things, and we prayed, and God filled him with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, what am I saying? Three ladies from a different culture, a different background, invite him to church. One bold guy with big ears shakes his hand and says, Hi, how are you? Nice to have you. And then, through that, relationship and trust has come about. And what happens? This man gets filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, Warren, he had a church background from before. I think you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Would you let me do a Bible study with you? So we arranged to sit down, do a Bible study, and uh, we just, I didn't give him the whole nine yards. I just said, Warren, I just want you to think about this, and so on and so on and so forth. This is what, what can happen. And that night, he got baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank God for that. And now we're starting to help him to continue to walk with the Lord Jesus. What I'm saying is simple things. Now, the person that we're talking about here in the scripture that I, I'm going to quote to you, it says in Acts 5.20, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Now, these were the apostles. They had literally just been taken out of prison. And God, uh, and what is more, miraculously taken out of prison. And God gives them instructions. Now, we can say, but I'm not this. I'm not that. I've not been miraculously delivered from a prison. Yes, you have. If you have committed your life to the Lord Jesus, if you have been baptized in his name, and if you have received the Holy Spirit, God has done a miracle in your life. And his miraculous power is upon you and in you and working through you. So go and speak to the people. Just go and talk to people about Jesus. Tell people about Jesus. If you don't, if you don't feel you can do a Bible study, give your testimony as to what Jesus has done. Everybody here believes in the power of prayer. Anybody not? I'll come and pray for you. <laughs> Sorry, no, that was, that was a joke. That was... You can pray with people. You've heard Sister Rena testify about people, her neighbors, being willing to be prayed for. You remember when they lived in Ward End and they prayed for their Muslim neighbors and what happened? Their Muslim neighbors came to the time we couldn't have church in our building at the time 
and they had Muslims who came along to the meeting. Let me tell you, folks, you can break through barriers. You can go and speak to people of other faiths, of other religions. Go and speak to them about the Lord Jesus and make prayer that connection. How many people believe that God hears your prayers when you pray? Joe, I'm going to pray for you, man. It just, it, he's not encouraging, man. I, you know, I was friendly to him. I shook his hand. Listen, I'm Mark. I'm really pleased to see you, bro. But some people are a bit miserable, you know. <laughs> you have to work a bit at the relationship, okay? No, I'm not only kidding. But if we believe that God answers prayer, if people are willing to let us pray for them, what's going to happen when we pray for them? You think God's going to leave you on your own? Oh, sorry, you're on your own. Uh, no. If you pray in the name of Jesus, God is going to touch that person. They might not get filled with the Holy Ghost, they might, but why not believe that they can be prayed for and that God can heal them? Sister Wynn, we, we all saw up on the stage that lady, Vicky, who was... Brother Frank was waving. And the next day, because I, I, I was praying for her, she said, the person laid hands on the left hip, and she says, I've still got a problem with my right hip, but I've got no pain in my left hip. She says, oh, it's wonderful, she says. I can, I can sleep without pain. I was thinking, I don't have any problem sleeping. <laughs> but I didn't say that, thankfully. But God touched her. And we're not, let me tell you, we're not talking about somebody with a religious background. She was telling me her mum and dad were atheists. They didn't do any religious stuff in the house. There was nothing to encourage them about having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I think the only reason she came was because, you guessed it, somebody invited her. I don't think she knew what to expect. I don't think she knew what she was getting into. How many people knew what it was going to be like when they went into a Pentecostal church? I didn't. Some of you were brought up in this. Some of you know about this. When I went into a Pentecostal church, I didn't know anything that was going to happen, and it surprised me. But it touched me as well. When we go and we speak to people, God can use us. You know, when, the, when persecution came and God allowed persecution to come to the church. And do you know why he allowed persecution to come to the church? Because they were all getting very comfortable because they really liked the fact that they were with Jewish Christians. So their mates not only understood about the law, but they understood about Jesus as well. And they were having great church services they were seeing the power of God move, but God had other plans. He didn't just want to have comfy church with those who were Jewish believers. He wanted them to go out to the uncomfortable places, to stretch themselves. And so even Peter, who'd stepped out of the boat and walked on water, found it difficult to believe that God wanted to reach those people. But God spoke to him. But God brought persecution to the church so that the Christians were scattered from Jerusalem. The only people who were allowed to stay there were the apostles. And guess what happened? The ordinary brothers and sisters... Not the apostles, because they were still in Jerusalem. The ordinary brothers and sisters went everywhere, and they spread the good news. They went. They obeyed the word of Jesus. Go and speak to people. Go and speak to people. So if God has spoken your name, called you by name, amen, and 
I, I realized the importance of names because I, I'm so hopeless. But when God speaks to your heart and your life and you realize that he knows you, and then he's opened up your ears and loosed your tongue so that you can hear and you can praise God. And then when you've seen his miraculous power touching your life, it's time to go. Time to go and get out. When you leave church today, go and speak to people about the things of life. Go and speak to people about what God has done for you. Go and tell people about conference if you've been in conference. But just go and tell people about Jesus because you've been with Jesus. And I love it in Acts chapter 4 where... We know again the miraculous power of God has healed the lame man from the beautiful gate. But they, because they've done it in the name of Jesus and because it's offensive to the religious people, they tell them no longer to speak in the name of Jesus. But they took note about them that they'd been with Jesus. They were people who didn't have the educational advantages and backgrounds of other people. And they noted that, but they noticed that they had been with Jesus. And when we're with Jesus and we're touched by him, he also tells us not only to come, but then to go. Go and tell other people. Let's stand to our feet right now. Let's ask God to just touch us afresh and anew right now, to speak into our hearts and into our lives by his spirit and by his power. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you will speak to every heart and every life here, O oh God. Speak their names, O oh God, so that they know that you, the great God of glory and power and majesty and wonder, are interested in them and in their life and in their heart before you, O oh God. Speak, I pray, and speak, O oh God, their, their name, O oh God, so that they will know that you care for them and love them, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that if there is anything uh, in the name of Jesus that would seek to take a hold of us and to deafen us or to stop us speaking, uh, we say, Ephatha, in the name of Jesus. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be loosed by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be loosed in the name of Jesus Christ and hear and speak the wonderful things of God. And Lord, as you bid us to come to you, Lord, let us see your wonderful power touching our hearts and lives. And oh God, let us then go and speak your wonderful goodness and your kindness and your grace. In the name of Jesus, would you just go and pray with somebody next to you maybe and just place your hand upon their shoulder and pray the power and blessings of God upon them. In the name of Jesus, would you just go and bless somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hallelujah. Just find somebody to place your hand upon, amen, and speak the blessings of God in Jesus' mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for your glory and for your honor and for your praise, O oh God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor here i am to worship so here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonder let's tell the lord we are here to worship here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sins upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sins upon that cross and I'll never know how much it cost to see my sins upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say, you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Let's sing it one more time. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say. Lord, we're so thankful that you have spoken our name and we know that we are yours. And we thank you that you have spoken deliverance and freedom over our lives to hear your voice and to speak of your wonder. We thank you that you call us out of the boat to come to you and experience your power. But Lord, as we go from this place, Lord, may you help us to gossip the gospel, to speak of the goodness and the kindness of God. And may many be drawn to you, we pray, for your glory and honor. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Greet one another by name. Tell them you're glad to see him today. In Jesus.